Hi, I'm Grimith, and this is Ancient History. Back in September 2011, I recorded Five Days a Stranger. It was different from most everything I'd uploaded before. See, Five Days is an adventure horror game, and this channel didn't do those. Except for the Mac Venture series. I don't enjoy horror, I've got mixed feelings about adventure, and yet I found Five Days enjoyable in some twisted way. My viewers did too. I received requests to play out the rest of the series, an entire quadrilogy, and I did just that. What a busy month it was, over eight years ago. Side note, Five Days a Stranger was created by Ben Yahtzee Croshaw in 2003 using the Adventure Game Studio engine. It is currently available at no charge on his website, along with many of his other games. I will provide a link in the video description. Now, fast forward to this past summer. I gave my patrons a Let's Get On With It Revisit poll. Something from the past I'd play all over again. One of the options? The aforementioned quadrilogy. That option won? And so here we are. We'll be going through all four games. Five Days a Stranger, Seven Days a Skeptic, Trilby's Notes, and Six Days a Sacrifice. I have not played these games since 2011, back when this interface was possible. I have not rewatched my videos. I'm most certainly not blind, but my memory's hazy, so it's like I'll be discovering the Trilby Quadrilogy, as I call the Jizo Mythos games, all over again. I would ask you folks to keep the comments spoiler free about the series. Don't bring things up until they're brought up in game. I'm sure four of you have already fired off a certain two word phrase. You don't have to delete it, but be more considerate like I was when I showed off my old YouTube background. Wink. Let's begin. Yes, this should be a painless and rewarding evening's entertainment. A, a few technical notes. Uh, first, I've cropped the window and then uh, distorted it out into 720p. Um, by base, the game displays at either 320 by 200 or 640 by 400. Um, I'll uh, actually be playing the game through my uh, my. OBS window that I've stretched out because my vision not as good and I don't feel like pulling out the Windows magnifier. So that'll be a curiosity for me. Also, there's not that much in the way of music in this game. Uh, that comes in later titles, entries into the series. I'll be fiddling with sound balance though throughout all four games to determine like where I want things to be. So if something comes across as much louder, Case in point, well, don't be surprised, or much quieter. I'm a mercurial man who can never make up his mind about just about everything. One final note is that a viewer requested I play through these games with dev commentary. I'm willing to try it for five days. I'll leave your feedback on whether you like this. I'll make a judgment based on your feedback. Everything looked good. One final check. Let's get this show on the road. Day one.
and the gentleman thief makes his entrance. That's Trilby there in a mask, along with his trademark Grawly. I'm pretty sure that is, which is his grappling hook disguised as an umbrella. Uh, there was a side game, Trilby the Art of the Thief, which uh, covered Trilby's antics uh, that was not this adventure horror game. So, I haven't launched the game in forever. Let me familiarize myself with the controls. Okay, good. Good, good. It's there. We can have a review over it. This is our interface. Great. We got a safe. A rather dreadful portrait of a woman, early Victorian style, and I notice a wedding band on her finger. This must be the wife of the mansion's first owner. Also, I'm adjusting to playing a game through my display window instead of the actual game window. It's bizarre. A safe that Trilby can crack in his sleep. Empty cabinet. And a bunch of books. Got a desk. Made by the most recent tenant. The certificate say Bachelor of Law award awarded to Clarence Defoe by the University of Warwick. He was the last owner of the house who recently died, and I think I've just lost whatever sympathy I had for him. Okay, well, we're here to loot. It's time to take some shit. Too bulky to carry around. It's also unsigned and therefore valueless. Drawers are... useless. What about the safe? Damn it, it's empty. Family solicitor got here first. Anything valuable in the books? No interest. Okay. Cabinet is definitely empty. The certificates most certainly aren't going to be getting me anything of value. Well, kind of a bust here in this room. Can we take the chair with us at least? <laughs> Come on, use your imagination. I'm not sure what to do with myself. Let's have a look at Trilby. That's me, Trilby. With the window that he came in through, and that's a door. Well, room was a bust, but we've got plenty of other rooms in this damn house. Those two stories, let's get cracking. Trilby, you are making this needlessly complica complicated, but sure, whatever. He's alone in this house, he can go wherever he pleases. Why go out? It might be like an idiosyncrasy of his, you know, people have obsessions and quirks like that. But it looks like we're not going to be going through the window, because it got jarred shut. Should have left it propped open with the growly. Oh well, no big deal. Let's actually take this damn door. Sometimes your information can be inaccurate, right? Also, a reminder to myself that thanks to the special edition, might not have been included in the special edition and just in the general edition, but I can use a function keys to hotkey things instead of going in the inventory, and they're also available as buttons down here. Got ourselves a locked door. Fairly confident all these doors are locked up here, with the exception of the room that we just came out of, and then a room here at the end of the hallway. Which is the bathroom. What we could really do with a haircut. Take a look around. We have the sink here. Who would leave the taps of running out of sheer malevolence. He's not a wet, wet bandit. The day. A toilet. And a shower curtain. But where did that man go? How anticlimactic indeed. Jam shut there. Okay. Well, downstairs it is. Maybe he ran down the stairs and we just didn't notice because we were reflecting on the fact that we were still wearing our mask. Come on, Trilby. You know you want to get down there. Damn it, Trilby. Thank you. Telephone? Line's dead. Front door? No latch, no chain, no deadbolt, no keyhole. But it still cannot be opened. Press 
dresser. Ornamental. Cabinets are all empty. Rocking chair. Doesn't want to steal the furniture quite yet. Straight from the Argos catalog to your living room. An antique, probably fetch a decent amount if he could find the right dealer. You know, once he figures out how the hell he's going to get out of here. Because the front door doesn't work. And neither do two windows. And the telephone doesn't work. And that's understandable. Ever sells a painting over here, signed uh, Matthew Defoe. Circa 1818. An amateurish landscape. Not good enough for him to swipe. Popular Victorian fiction, which he doesn't think is going to be that valuable at all. And a door. It's what people call a door. Fills ungainly holes in walls. Keen senses inform a door. It's larger than a window, smaller than a garage, or garage if you prefer. Could very well even be the best door. Or maybe that's the best door. Once upon a time, Charlie went out with a girl who had a door just like that. Her name was Patricia. Uh, she had... I skipped through a little bit of dialogue there. It didn't really matter, because she had the most incredible pair of... Door knockers. Earrings. She left me for the lead singer of The Doors, which explains why this door reminds me of her, I suppose. Sorry, I have a tendency to ramble when players won't stop looking at the bloody doors. Fine. Fine. Let's go through the door now. Sofa? An overstuffed sofa. A television? With a VCR? And a cord. TV must have another power source. Ta-da! Get another door. Why don't we take a look at the telly? See what's on. Tragedy happened here not too long ago, shortly after Clarence moved in. Very recently, he proved himself, uh, the proper inheritor of this family mansion. He and his wife renovated the place, came in, and there was apparently a murder-suicide. Though many have insisted that Sir Clarence was incapable of such an act. Now, no one knows who the hell will get this. Well, damn. Alright, that was the news. Trilby hates television. Trilby's probably a cord cutter. We're going to help along. Sure, that was to the VCR. But... It was a cord all the same. And that's what matters. Howdy. I'm sorry? I've been stuck in this house for days. There's the way out. Uh, what? You own this, right? No, no. Window. Man is very excited about this open window, but unfortunately, it jams shut. And Trilby is a new guest. Only five chairs. Damn it. Hartie's the name. Philip Harty. Trilby. We, like Phil, are now a prisoner. Like him and everyone else in the house. The house won't let people leave. No doors open, no windows open. Can't be shattered. 
Garden walls unclimbable can't be tunneled under. Impenetrable. I kind of fucked up that word, but it doesn't matter. Bill here's a man of action. He wants the hell out. I can't blame him. Trilby didn't sign up for this. It's supposed to be an easy job, in and out. Three more folks here. Jim, good kid. We've got a BBC correspondent. Great. I'm sure Trilby likes the news reporters. And AJ, the phenomenal one. A man of mystery. Very much like Trilby, I'm sure. Nearly a whole week. Oh, there's some meat around here. Gotta eat. Anyway, we were given a quest to fetch the others for this house meeting in the lounge that Phil is calling. We'll spread the word, damn it. I trust you'll enjoy your stay at Defoe Manor, Mr. Trilby. Trilby's like, what? What the hell? I didn't sign up for this shit. Well, damn. Tiger head? Presumably to justify its death in some small way. Trilby has a decided anti-hunting, at least for sport, attitude. Very old sepia photograph of a man in explorer's gear standing over a dead tiger. The label reads, Sir Roderick Tames, a vicious beast. A gun he's holding looks... A lot like the one over the fireplace. A big old musket rifle. Savage versus savage. Sir Roderick in car stairs. A native village. A fire, which has been lit recently. Let's see if we can uh, abscond with any of these belongings. Car boat. <laughs> car boot sale material. Antlers wouldn't fit inside my blazer, damn it. Things heavier than it looks. He's not carrying around this gun everywhere. He insists that he will not be leaving with it, so we put it back where it belongs. Lionhead, he has a thing about lions. A bell jar containing a rather hideous looking wooden idol. Well, that could be worth something. <sighs> Come on, it might be a collector's item for someone. Damn it, Trilby, think profit. Maximize your gains. Embrace your inner corporateness. Corporate Trilby, come on. Anyway. Let's go fetch some other people. We'll have to find them, but... We can probably do that. We're a gentleman thief. Have a look at some things around here. Newspaper? Of course, we got no good fortune out of leaving through that way. Should always keep abreast of day-to-day -day events. Uh, if I open my inventory... A copy of the local paper dated last Friday. Heir to Defoe Estates found dead. Sir Clarence Defoe, last of the long-running Defoe line, was found dead yesterday in his home. Defoe, 24, was found hanging from a tree in the front yard of Defoe Manor. His recent bride was also found dead in the mansion, apparently stabbed to death. The inspector closed the case. No mystery. Defoe killed his wife and himself. That's it. Couldn't have been a third party. Ta-da! Sir Clarence, a solicitor, has gone on record questioning the inspector's judgment. Um, infinitely content, Sir Clarence was. Never would have committed such an act if there was no suicide note. Okay, a little bit of controversy there. But murder, uh, suicide, open and shut. Couldn't have been anything else. Over here, a pleasantly professional quality portrait of a bearded man of Victoria Explorer's outfit, Sir Roderick Defoe. That's got to be worth something, right? Too big. And for completionist's sake, we'll take a look at the windows. They're so dirty that you can't really see through them, though. Mysterious. A chair? There's a time and place for rest. There's nothing on or under the table. 
cheap wooden dining chairs and uh, most likely a table from Ikea. Here in the kitchen, we got ourselves a fridge, which is brand new. Evidently no one cares if I starve in this place, so we're not doing good on rations. But Trilby wasn't raised in a barn, so he promptly closes the unit. Cabinet. Cooker. It's never been used. Here, we've got salt. But if I ever need lethal quantities of salt, I'll know where to look. A huge old bag of salt. And the sink. He doesn't need to wash his hands, so we're good. All to say about the kitchen. Outside, we've got a fucking stick. A twig, even. My word. Damn it, Trilby, just pick it up. If you don't want to look at it, fine, but pick it up. Pick up sticks. That's right, Trilby. An ordinary twig from the garden. Very good, Trilby. A tree? A large oak tree. Which, you know, maybe use our grolly to get up if we don't want to climb up. And catapult ourselves across the wall. Huzzah! We win. It's very sturdy and smooth, but we'll probably figure it out. A door, which is disappointingly locked. Some water, deep and smells strongly of chlorine. Looks like it's uh, well maintained. That's good. And a pipeline. Wonder where it leads. We take a look. We've got a lot of lawn here. Someone has been tunneling, not just attempting to tunnel beneath the wall, but also seemingly looking for something. Trilby doesn't want to do anything around here. So let's skedaddle. Well... No Jim, no AJ, no Simone out there. Let's go back upstairs and have a gander. There's not that many places to hide in this house. Yoo-hoo! Howdy! That's Simone Taylor, television personality. <laughs> not in the mood for picking fights. Pog me, madam. What? Oh. Hey, you'll have mentioned we had a new guest. Hope he told you about the lounge meeting. Uh, I'm Trilby. No, just Trilby. Hey, wait a second. Cat burglar! Hey! We have a fan. Trilby's face, like, illuminated by, like, the, the light fixture, like, right next to it. Madam, even if I did have a sudden retarding brain injury that would cause me to do so. Don't you think our apparent imprisonment is a slightly more urgent matter? Uh, I mean... Maybe. She's learned a whole hell of a lot, though. That's good. Put some weight into it. Devise a makeshift battering ram or something. Apparently Phil's uh, go-to move is to organize lounge meetings. Alright. She's gone now. She couldn't get the door open. And she's presumably off to the lounge. Now, because I might have needed to come up here for a certain trigger for someone to appear outside, let us head back outside. Hey! We'll talk to the tree. Is there someone up there? Howdy! Have you come to set us free? Uh, no, not quite. 
That's jungle gym. I mean, you're certainly high enough. Tiptoe over that branch. Oh, come on. Ravine. Okay, so... We'll take a mattress and some blankets and we'll... We'll figure it out. We got enough cloth around here. I got my grolly. All right. Well... Two out of three ain't bad. Maybe Phil found AJ. Probably for the best that AJ doesn't see us anyway. We might have the mask off, but... I would want to unsettle him. Yeah, we found two out of three. I'll have us with four people at the meeting. Woo! Howdy! Our new arrival is graced us with presents. There is certainly plenty I'd like to know. Should have brought a chair in for the dining room. So, to understand everything, an invisible intelligence is trapping everyone in this house. Uh-huh. You can't leave. Uh-uh. And Trilby immediately became trapped when he entered. Why? <laughs> Maybe they have. Maybe one of us is behind all this. Nonsense. Why would... No, that doesn't make sense at all. I don't speak loony, damn it, woman. Don't squabble, everyone. We'd only hinder each other. This doesn't have to be a reality television show or a horror movie. Everyone here is innocent. E5, including AJ. Where is he? Ah, I haven't the foggiest. I officially filed it under not my problem. Listen, Mr. Trilby, we work as a team. So, we all have to act as a team. No secrets, wink. Phil gets it. Didn't come here to take part in some bizarre Big Brother reality event, that's for damn sure. Uh, supposed to be empty? Last air just died. Supposed to be empty. Plenty of valuables and goodies inside. Yeah. Alright, question time, everyone. Viewers do delight in question time. Yeah! Let's ask some questions. Some more. You're the closest. What do you know about the mansion? Some pretty disturbing stories. Feels like, oh, son of a bitch. Weird happenings have been around here for decades. The first disappearance of the original owner and his son. People have gone missing in the area around the house more than anywhere else in the country. People from all walks of life. People like us? Uh, don't say that. Did you come to be here, Simone? Well, she's here for a documentary, of course. And lots of interesting old ghost stories. It pull in the ratings that we talked about, Defoe Manor. And not because it would make interesting viewing. This is why I hate television. <laughs> Excuse me, I was talking. She got here before the camera crew, but she could not contain herself, bouncing with glee across the entire grounds of the estate, and then she ended up in the backyard, and once you get in the backyard, you can't get back out. That wall, unassailable, can't climb it. Uh, what about your camera crew? Hasn't the foggiest. Well, Simone, 
let's see, we've just crossed the half hour mark, but just like I did back in the day, I divided all these segments into their own days, so what the hell? Tell me a bit about yourself. I've got loads of time. We're in for it now. BBC correspondent, yes. Outside broadcast for the news. Documentaries, variety shows. Whenever she's needed, really. A Jill of all trades. Master of none. Okay, Phil? Mr. Hardy? What do you know about this mansion? <laughs> he knows plenty, thanks to the an article in this month's Treasure Hunting Monthly, built by some explorer guy. His wife died giving birth. He and his son went missing some time later. Hmm. Article could be informative than someone paraphrasing it. So Phil offers us the article to read at our own leisure. Just so long as we give it back to him. And how did you come to be here? Mr. Reader of Treasure Hunter Monthly. Well, he's here for some damn artifacts. Come on, Simone. Spoil sport. Old family tomb's gonna help himself. I don't really need those trinkets anymore. It's a really grave robbing. Come on. Pulled in a few favors to hoist him over the wall, but, uh... His favors didn't follow him over the wall. If only we had like a climber's kit or something, damn it. <laughs> but then how would we deal with the ravine? Well, Phil, tell me a bit about yourself. The import export business. Thief like Locke, I'm a treasure hunter. Damn it. I truly can identify with this man. They're in similar career paths. However, unlike Phil, Trilby is a gentleman. And finally, Jim, who's been sitting there placidly like he's in trouble, you know, he's in school. Arms on his legs. Rigid. What do you know about this mansion, Jim? Not much. This place does have a haunted reputation. And childhood stories were, were told of it. Crazy hermit lived... The stoop kid who killed people and ate them alive. But if you kill them, then well, maybe you kill them by eating them. Yeah, let's not think too hard about it. How did you come to be here, Jim? Wait, didn't I say a turn on author commentary? Hold on, I just remembered this. I left that off. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I guess it was meant to be. Anyway, Jim here fell for the classic. Um, no one calls me chicken. Double dog dare you. Go get him, tiger. Step onto the stoop. Ding dong, ditch the crazy hermit. So Jim walks in, but he gets trapped. Been stuck here ever since. Who cool. probably knows he's gone. Tell me a bit about yourself, Jim. Where were you before you came here? School, I imagine. St. Tridian's Boarding School, which is not far from here. Been there since he was ten. And he's nearly sixteen. 
Alright, good info dump, everyone. I've enjoyed the past five minutes. A house only traps people individually instead of in groups, isolates them, divides and conquers. Maybe. But how'd they know we were coming? Who is responsible for assembling this mansion party? What kind of crazy game will we be playing? This place is not haunted, though, damn it. We might very well be on camera. Locking up some people in a house against their will and secretly filming them. Sounds like a natural reality TV progression. Hmm. Highly illegal. Has that ever stopped you before, viewers? Anyway, back to AJ. Um, apparently he was doing some research on the house, which was going to be shared tonight. But he's absent. I mean, we, we couldn't possibly look for him in the expanse of this mansion. This manor, this estate. Eh, it'll be fine. We'll have a chat with him tomorrow. We'll look for him then. He couldn't have gotten far if we're all really stuck here. Tired. Uh, we'll just go to sleep, everyone. Did you hear that? It's Trilby! He's never dreamt so vividly before. So disturbing. What could it mean? What could this all mean? Why did Grimmeth only just now remember that he was supposed to turn on Dev commentary? Oh well, I'm sure Yahtzee's done me relatively recent review of his own games on his YouTube channel, which is more recent than the dev commentary in this game, even though it's kind of frozen and preserved and like has like a moment of time. When the author or developer of a thing reviews their own thing, it's kind of different than how they were when they actually created the, you know, I could just keep rambling, but that'd be stretching on video length time. Listen, I'm just gonna go. That was a fun day one. Um, Reflect, everyone, and I'll see you on the next day for maybe dev commentary, maybe not, maybe it's a sign. Uh, we go see about AJ, have some chats about some dreams, try to find a way out. Maybe we'll use our fucking growly. Did you hear that? It's probably nothing.